before I met my wife, I was involved with a, with a young lady, which again, I shouldn't have been in. Eventually that broke up, my heart got broken, I got into a car, I drove all the way, I left my phone at home, I just left. And eventually, <laughs> when I got to it, I thought to myself, I have to phone home. Because if I phone home, maybe because I thought they're going to be so angry at me because I was away for the, um, the whole of the day and they were phoning my phone crazy and it was just ringing there in the home. But I made up my mind, I'm going to, I'm going to leave this God. I'm going to leave this girl and I'm just, I'm just going to look for another life. And so I'll never forget it. I, I, I rode my little Opel Cadet. I had a blue Opel Cadet 140C. I drove that little car on it, played 363. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I drove my little car. I had my cigarettes with me and my drink. And there I drove the little car. Blessed be that I was worshiping, but I was messed up. Eventually I thought to myself, where, you know, you need to phone home. So I stopped somewhere there. I don't even know where. I, and, I, and I thought to myself, and this was God, I think, speaking to me. And the Lord said to me, well, that, that stage I didn't know his voice like I know his voice now. And the Lord said to me, phone home. And so I phoned home. And you know who answered? My dad answered. I said, where are you, son? I said, please don't be mad. It was my first word. He said, I'll never be mad. He said, I don't care what you've done and I don't care where you are. What I do care about is you coming home. Where are you? I said, I don't know where I am. <laughs> he said, because I was fighting from the ticket box. You know the ticket box? You know, that's, that I, was, I didn't have money either, either, so I needed to phone the operator. It was heavy. But anyway, got the home. <laughs> so that gives away a little bit of the age. But anyway, the point is, my dad said, call the guy that's closest. I called the guy there, there at the mobile. I said, come here. My dad wants to talk to you. I gave him the phone. He said, where are you? And the guy explained. My dad said, okay, what you do now is you drive like this, you drive like that. You go, you go to your grandma in Bloemfontein. It's going to take you about this much time. You're going to get there. We'll phone everybody. They're waiting for you. And I was 170 kilometers or so off from Bloemfontein. Here's the bottom line of the story. When I came in with my car that night, late at night, I was about 11 o'clock at night. Here stood my grandfather and my grandmother. They were in their late 70s already. Here the two old precious people stand. And they stand like this arms wide open I get out of the car I didn't have money for nothing I I, I had enough money to get a it just tells you how much I, I'm always you know clean conscious and looking good and smelling good I I went to buy one toothbrush and a small little toothpaste and I bought axe like a little five milliliter thingy it's like somebody the other day asked me do you what is that that you're wearing? X, I'm like, X, uh, X, no. It's not X that I wear, don't, whatever. Oh, I'm teasing, guy. The point is, love sent me home. Love set me free. What sets you free here tonight? It's the love of God. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance.